Okay, this is the podcast for part one for the animal section for your portfolio of invertebrates. This actually is in chapter 28 and 29. First thing we're going to cover is the characteristics of all animals. Um, all animals are multicellular eukaryotes. We have cells that are specialized to perform specific functions, heterotrophic. Most can move. There are a couple exceptions. Most have nervous and muscle systems that enable them to respond to stimuli. Um, we are diploid organisms that reproduce sexually. And there are two main groups. We're covering invertebrates first, and then eventually we'll get to vertebrates. Um, there are three environments that animals can live in. They can live in the sea. It's difficult to live in the sea because of the current. Um, fresh water also, but there's less food available, and they have the problem of water diffusing into their cells. And then some animals live on land, and that's a problem of dehydration. Animals are classified based on symmetry, which is the arrangement of body structures in relation to the axis of their body. There's two main types. If you have symmetry, radial is the general form of a wheel with a central axis, and bilateral, where your body is divided by one plane to produce two equal halves. Um, looking at a bilateral organism, these are terms you need to know when we start doing dissections. Ventral is the bottom or the back surface. Anterior is referring to the head end. Posterior is the tail end, and dorsal is the front surface or the top. Okay. All right. Animals are also classified on whether they have a body cavity or not. A body cavity is also called a coelom. Um, structures of most animals develop from three tissues, embryonic tissue layers called the germ layers. These three tissues are the ectoderm, which gives rise to the outer covering of the animal and their nervous system, the endoderm, which is the inner layer and forms the digestive tract, and then you have the middle layer called the mesoderm, and that gives rise to most organs. There are also other things that these tissues develop into. For example, ectoderm um, is responsible for forming the cornea, the lens of the eye, tooth enamel, etc. Uh, mesoderm is your backbone, skeletal muscular system, and some of the other systems here, lining of the body cavity. Endoderm is the middle, and those are mainly your organs. Okay, and some glands. All right, animals are also classified on the three types of body cavities. Um, if they do not have a body cavity at all, that means they're solid throughout the body. Those are called acelomates. Pseudocelomates means they have a false body cavity because they do not have all three tissues. Um, they have a false body cavity between two of the tissues, mesoderm and endoderm. And then a true body cavity is the coelomates, and that means they're completely lined with mesoderm. Here's a picture, acelomates. You can see it's solid. There is no body cavity there. Here's a pseudocelomate, and as you can see, here is a pseudocelum. It's not lined with mesoderm on both sides. Where you can see on a coelomate, you have the mesoderm, which is in red, on both sides of the opening cavity. Okay? Classified, um, animals are also classified on development. There are two main evolutionary lines, the protostome, which is when the blastospore, which is an opening to the outside, um, develops into the mouth. Or the deuterostome, and that means that opening, that blastospore, is going to develop into the anus first. And then a second opening will arise, and that will develop into the mouth. Okay? So in protostomes, the opening here that results is going to develop into the mouth. And in a deuterostome, their blastopore that develops the opening is going to develop into the anus first. Okay? All right, so the first phylum we're going to cover is the periphera. Um, there are three classes, class Calcara, class Hectacnidellida, and class Demospongi. Um, they're based on what their body is made of, their spicules, calcium carbonate versus regular spicules or spongin. There is no symmetry in a sponge, it's asymmetrical. Their body cavity, um, they don't have any tissues, so they're acelomates. Um, for their muscular, skeletal, and skin, they have incurrent pores where water will enter. Um, there are three types of the skeleton material, calcium carbonate, like I said, spicules, and spongin. Here are the three different types of what a sponge can look like, depending on the type of spicules that they have. All right, digestive system. Sponges are filter feeders. They trap their food as water, water filters through. They have coanocytes, which are ciliated cells that beat, with, that beat their flagella and capture their food. 
and amoebocytes, which pick up caught food and supply the rest of the sponge with nutrients. Um, they don't have a circuitry system. They just do everything through diffusion. Okay, so here are your coanocytes. They're also called collar cells, and you can see the flagella, and these are the ones that will capture the food, and here's a real picture of them right there. All right, respiratory system is also done through diffusion. Excretory system is how they get rid of their waste, and they do that through those cells called amoebocytes. And the nervous system, they don't have one. They have a low reaction to any stimuli. Reproduction, they do asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. If for asexual reproduction, they, re they will regenerate. They also can form gemmules in harsh conditions to help them survive, and they will bud. Sexual reproduction, they do have the sperm and the egg that can join together. Um, sponges are hermaphrodites and can produce both, but not at the same time. For defense, some sponges are poisonous. Other things to know is that a sponge cannot move. Once it attaches to a rock or the bottom of the ocean, it no longer moves. So here we have some pictures in the back of your notes. This is an example of a calcium carbonate um, sponge. This is an example of one that has regular spicules, which we'll look at under the microscope. And this is a softer sponge, or the spongin. Here is your internal structure of the sponge. A is spongocele, right here. That's the center cavity. Um, skipping to C, these are your incurrent pores where the water will go in. You can see there's a few of those. E is an amoebocyte, right here. They look like little amoebas um, that will bring the food to the rest of the cells. F are the spicules. Okay, you can see these little spiky things that forms the skeleton of the sponge. Coanocytes are the ones with the flagella. This flagella helps push the water up and also will catch the food. And then your osculum is the top opening of a sponge where the water will come out. And that finishes up our podcast.